Hello everyone and welcome back to Amos, our course on Agile methods and open source software. In this second part of 7, uh, I will talk about the overall scrum process that we employ in the Amos project. We will go over tools and artifacts and the critical team meeting. This is the essential Amos project that students need to know. So the goal of an Amos project is actually to develop useful software with an industry partner. And ideally that is not just for the garbage bin, but rather it's software that is well documented and can be developed further, which is why we develop it as open source software. The overall process and the engineering practices consist of Scrum and extreme programming. Scrum is used for the overall process and extreme programming is used mainly for its engineering practices, so not for the process practices. The Amos project is a course that runs at a university and that can be quite challenging. The reason is that universities are still quite different from companies. In fact, we have many more challenges at a university to perform reasonable software engineering projects than we would have inside a company. For one, students' abilities can vary widely. In addition, students are not always 100% on a project and actually it's usually not the case that they are just doing one project. Teams are not persistent. Teams change a lot during uh, the course of the studies. And it's really hard to get everyone into the same place at the same time. So then, that's why Scrum is particularly well suited for us because Scrum is a software engineering, software development process framework. So we need to make it work. We need to customize it for the university context. And that's what we are doing. So as you see me or listen to me describe Scrum, always keep in mind that this is Scrum adjusted to a university and student project context. A key thing we do is that each team, each student team has a supporting coach who supports the Scrum Master in the student project. They do not act as a Scrum Master themselves, but they support the Scrum Master. So then when we talk about Scrum, uh, here is the basics of it. Uh, a Scrum team consists of people playing these three roles. And that's all Scrum says you need to develop useful software. First, there's the product owner who holds overall responsibility for what needs to be done, the business value and how it is represented as features, functionality of a software product. Then there are the software developers who actually take the features uh, that the product owner describes, specifies, and turn them into useful running software that can be shown to gather feedback, that can be shown to industry partners and users. And finally, there's the Scrum Master who's responsible for making sure that the overall process runs smoothly. So product owner and software developer are responsible for the product in its glory, in its domain-specific functionality, both from a requirements and from an implementation perspective. And the Scrum Master looks at Scrum as a process that can and should possibly be improved. The Scrum Master was the opening and perhaps one of the reasons why Scrum was so successful in the marketplace. It's where you can come in as a consultant outside to a company who will become your customers because now you don't need to understand the domain. You really just need to focus on the process and that's what consultants like to do. Taken together, a product owner, the software developers and a Scrum Master form the Scrum team. In addition, we add the role of a release manager. That role, a person fulfilling that role is responsible for making sure that every week for the so-called sprint review, 
that every week there is a demoable, reviewable and releasable version of the software available. We will meet every week and we will discuss the progress of the software development project by show and tell of the software being developed. And if the software doesn't actually run, it doesn't even build or compile, then you have nothing to discuss. So the release manager's job is to enable the discussion by making sure that there is a releasable and demoable and viewable software available for the review meetings. The industry partner is outside the team. These are our industry friends from industry who play the customer role so that there are requirements, high level requirements that are to be turned into some software. The industry partner is not a product owner. They are not supposed to structure functionality for you. That's what the student product owners do. Here then you can see the timeline for a full Amos project at university and the whole three months of the project time frame are structured into sprints of one week. A sprint is a time box or an iteration. These are synonyms. A time box or an iteration of length of one week. So we deliver useful software, that's the purpose of a sprint, in increments once a week. And then we have uh, 14, 15 weeks in these three months. So we have 14, 15 sprints. We split the semester or the project time frame into two. There's the mid project release about at about half time of the project. And then there's the final product release or project release at the end of the project. So really the time frame has consists of the initial six, seven sprints and the second six to seven sprints each for a product release. So what is a release? Well, it's that useful software that actually does something that is helpful to a customer. Um, so it's a named, identifiable, consistent and useful snapshot of what you're developing. At the end of each one week sprint, there is a sprint release. So hopefully a sprint release where you create that release for the content of the sprint. And after six, seven weeks each for each project stage, there's a project or product release which is expected to be of higher quality usually than the sprint release because there are only two, where the assumption is, well, you can surely deploy that for production, meaning has sufficient high quality in what it does. The week of a sprint or the sprint overall, whether it's a week or more, has this structure, conceptually speaking. It starts with a sprint planning meeting where the scrum team agrees upon the work to be done. And after that planning meeting, the different work streams start. The work streams are product management done by the product owners, software development done by the software developers and process improvement done by the scrum master. Every day, the team coordinates by way of a daily scrum we will be using a stand-up email to inform each other about how you're doing because you students usually can't meet every day um, at the same point in time. Close to the end of the sprint, there's a sprint preparation meeting in which you prepare the sprint planning of the next uh, sprint. That usually means that an engineer helps a product owner understand the size and complexity of those features the product owner would like to see done in the next uh, sprint and gives them feedback from an engineering perspective, whether this is reasonably cut, etc. At the end of a sprint, there is the review, release and retrospective session where during the review, you review your weeks or sprints work, make a release decision and then you do a process retro retrospective to see whether you can improve, can improve your process. And that's it. Uh, the overall schedule of the course, including what to deliver, when, is laid out in the course organization doc. Please take a look there. And with that, 
uh, I'm closing the first section of the second part. Thank you very much for your time and attention and see you in the next section on tools and artifacts.